Welcome to Service 60 and this is for the 15th of May 2022. Today we're looking at Peter's vision in Acts chapter 11. It's the vision of the, the sheet held at four corners. But first we're going to have a song and as usual the lyrics and chords can be found in the video description. Ask the Lord for more of the spirits, and you shall find. Knock the door will open to you, God is kind. and the other believers throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. When Peter went to Jerusalem, those who were in favour of circumcising Gentiles criticised him, saying, You were a guest in the home of an uncircumcised Gentile, and you even ate with them. So Peter gave them a complete account of what had happened from the very beginning. While I was praying in the city of Joppa, I had a vision. I saw something come down that looked like a large sheet being lowered by its four corners from heaven, and it stopped next to me. I looked closely inside and saw domesticated and wild animals, reptiles and wild birds. Then I heard a voice saying to me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I said, Certainly not, Lord. No ritually unclean or defiled food has ever entered my mouth. The voice spoke from heaven again. Do not consider anything unclean that God has declared clean. This happened three times, and finally the whole thing was drawn back into heaven. At that very moment, three men who had been sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house while I was staying. The Spirit told me to go with them without hesitation. These six fellow believers from Joppa accompanied me to Caesarea and we all went into the house of Cornelius. 
He told us how he had seen an angel standing in his house who said to him, Send someone to Joppa for a man whose full name is Simon Peter. He will speak words to you by which you and all your family will be saved. And when I began to speak, the Holy Spirit came down on them just as on us at the beginning. Then I remembered what the Lord had said, John baptised with water, but you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit. It is clear that God gave those Gentiles the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Who was I then to try to stop God? When they heard this, they stopped their criticism and praised God, saying, Then God has given to the Gentiles also the opportunity to repent and live. Visions are part and parcel of uh, the Bible, and especially in New Testament times, where um, Peter quoted one of the old prophets saying that uh, your young men would dream dreams, your old men would have visions, or, or was it the other way around? Yes, well, I, I became a Christian uh, in 1982. I, I spent the I spent the wee small hours arguing with my wife, well, discussing with my wife the the, the pros and cons of this thing called Christianity. And uh, her brain would tend to waking up about 11 o'clock at night, my brain went to sleep at 12 o'clock. <clears throat> so for one hour every day we had some sort of meaningful relationship. <clears throat> anyway, I started going to the Church of Scotland. I was a bit sceptical but, you know, the penny dropped. I, I'd, I took the Bible and I started to read it and I read three or four pages a day and it took me a year to get through it. But just as I hit the, the New Testament, it was like coming out of a dark forest and into the, the sunshine. The lights came on and yes, I believed and I got born again. Oh yes, I got a character transplant. I started off, uh, I turned into a reading machine for six months. I'm not very good at reading, unless it really grabs me. I'm, yeah, I'm not keen on reading. But for six months, I was devouring Christian books. And then it just stopped quite abruptly. It was like all the foundation stones had been laid. And I now knew more or less what I was doing. At that time I also experienced a lot of prophetic dreams. Nothing of world shattering importance, you know, no no prophecies for oh you know the end of times or anything like that, but I got a lot of those. And then they seemed to stop. So by the end of about the second year, I was just motoring through Christianity, still believing, but more or less just having to do it all myself, just read the book, listen to the sermons, sing the hymns, sometimes write the hymns. And I basically came to the conclusion that anything further like uh, talking in tongues, people had prayed for me to receive the gift of tongues, nah, nothing happened. Being baptised in the Holy Spirit, nothing happened. So after being a Christian for 15 years, I decided, well, I'll just keep going the way I am, you know. What else can I actually do? It's not within my power to do anything else. So there I was at an early morning prayer breakfast. And the subject of, for prayer was actually the, the Toronto Blessing. Do you remember that? It was way back in the, in the 90s. Uh, apparently great movements afoot in the a church in, in Toronto and uh, there was going to be a TV programme about it uh, in the next few days and we were basically praying that the makers of the programme would give the Toronto Blessing a fair 
a fair crack at it, uh, not actually knowing ourselves whether this was totally of God or a fake or, or whatever, you know, very, well, open-minded slash confused. <clears throat> so there we are. I'm in a lawyer's house in Lindsay. Lawyers have big houses. So it's a big, big room. And there's a minister sitting opposite me and he starts prophesying. Puts on the voice. The Lord says, He is the master mason. Eyebrows hit the ceiling in unison. But he didn't mean that sort of mason. No. The, the prophecy continues that we were his builders and we were to take uh, the mortar of love in our brickies hoods. That's the pole with the wee. So, yeah, you can put the hood and then two bits of wood. And the mortar goes in there and you got me a ladder to the, the roof or whatever you are. Uh, we were to take this mortar of love and with living stones build the church. Right, great. Now, as he was speaking, I saw what Peter saw. But I wouldn't describe it as a sheet held at four corners. You and I, we would describe it as a movie screen. Is that, that's what it looked like. And I'll show you. I'm not a very good artist, but this was May the 3rd, 1997. This is roughly what I saw. Now, what we're looking at here, uh, a rolling landscape and three guys oh, on, round, round this side, three guys round this side, and they are building this wall along both sides of this black road and they're using great big breeze blocks and you can see that the top of the, the wall is kind of, it's crenellated, it's like the top of a, a castle wall. And they were being very, very careful. They actually had some bricks on a, a pallet. They would shove the pallet forward its, its width and then they would build up the sides, both sides of the wall and constantly repeat the process. And the wall had been cut away on, on, on my side so that I could see what was going on. I just kind of understood that. Beyond them there are some warriors. Move in slightly. Focus on the warriors. Now I've only painted in seven here but there were probably 20 to 30 in, in the actual vision. The warriors were not the enemies of the men who were building the wall. They were on the same side but operating independently, shall we say. Now they charged off. Uh, they charged off in that direction. The way the wall and the road were, were actually actually going. And the builders ignored them and kept on building. Eventually passing these warriors in ones and twos and looking a bit the worse for wear. None of them dead but wounded. Yes, they'd have the, the stuffing knocked out of them, shall we say. The physical size of the vision, well, it was probably about 15 feet across and 10 feet high. It was a big room, I, I do emphasise, a big room. And it was translucent. I could actually see the minister of the fireplace, the furniture, etc. on the other side of this. And no one else in the room saw it. No one else. They are all in a sort of testosterone-filled atmosphere. Oh God, give us a sign! Show us a rule! And I couldn't get a word in edgeways to tell them. Look, excuse me guys, I'm seeing a vision here. You know, could someone, you know, anyone else seeing this? No. I gave up. I told them over the, the breakfast later on. So that was that. Now, what what are the implications and the applications for this? Well, in that particular vision, the, the message there was stop chasing after the latest 
interesting event in the Christian church and just get on with the day job. Build up the church in love. One brick at a time. The bricks representing, well, people. The application of Peter's uh, vision, of course, with all these animals in it, uh, was to show that the rules were now broken. The Jewish rules had basically been torn up. The dietary rules were torn up. It also had this application that, well, he was invited to the house of Gentiles. He went in, which as a Jew, of course, he really shouldn't have done. He ate with them, which as a Jew, he definitely shouldn't have done. And they received the Holy Spirit, which if you were Jewish, again, you would have thought, they definitely shouldn't have done, but they did. And the application of, of it was, of course, that Christianity uh, following God is not limited to just one race, but it's universal. It doesn't matter who you are. You could be Icelandic, you could uh, be a, a Maori, you could be from Argentina, and it just doesn't matter. The gospel is for absolutely everyone, even the Russians. Uh, yeah, I don't know, thinking what they've been up to. Even the Russians. It's also um, showing that race is not an issue because a lot of these people that received the gospel in the early church they were all different races. And the day of Pentecost, I mean, yes, a lot of Jerusalem is full of Jews, but they're from all over the place, you know. And not just born Jews, but adherent Jews, you know, the folk that had opted for Ju Judaism. They would come from all over the world. So, nationality and race, not a barrier to receiving the Holy Spirit. Now, looking to the future. Aha. Uh -huh. Do you like science fiction? I love it. Oh, I'm always watching science fiction. I used to read a lot when I was uh, when, when I was younger, before my taste for reading seemingly disappeared overnight. But um, one of the, 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 the constant themes in early science fiction was that the minute we discovered there was another race out there that were more advanced than us, religion would just be in the bucket. No, don't be silly, don't be silly. If we find another race out there, and who knows, that could happen next week. And it might never happen because, well, the universe is vast. And odds are God has made other nations, other creatures, other intelligent beings. Because, well, let's face it, he likes creating. Did he just make three different types of bird, small, medium and large? No, no, hundreds, possibly thousands. Butterflies? Yeah, the same. Fish? The same. He likes variety. That's what he does. Other civilizations out there? Well, I once read a kind of scientific uh, article uh, and it said that, that, yes, statistically, there should be thousands out there, if not millions. But the odds of any two inhabiting the same physical space uh, being able to contact one another and being at the same level of technology to allow that without actually blowing themselves up before they got there. Yeah, yeah. Mm. invent nuclear weapons and the next thing, boom, <laughs> nobody's left. The odds against that were remote and the article came to the conclusion that, you know, even if there are thousands and thousands of them out there, we're probably never going to meet any. But if it's like buses, nothing comes for ages and then two come at once. That's the way I look at the, uh, at the world. And the question will be not so much um, in their culture, their technology. That will all be interesting, especially if they're not shooting at us, because that would be good. But if we actually get a chance to talk, what are their ideas about God? And the crucial question is not so much How do they worship God? How do they describe him or whatever? 
you know, how do they think about God? No, it's, have you received the Holy Spirit? Once you're told about Jesus, do you receive the Holy Spirit? So actually, if we ever do come across an intelligent race that we can communicate with, uh, that's the test. It's just a new area to evangelise and to spread the good news, not just throughout the earth, throughout the cosmos. Now let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and evermore. Amen. First I saw a new heaven, then I saw a new earth. Heaven and earth had passed away Oceans too Coming down Jerusalem Shining like the sun Dressed in gold and precious stones See her come Look God's dwelling places now Here with man he will be their God and we'll be his clan. He will wipe the tears away from our eyes. Death and pain have passed away with all life. God said, I make all things new. Take these words as true I am Alpha Omega Come to you Those who are victorious Shall inherit this Murderers, idolaters Second death Look God's dwelling places now here with man He will be their God And we'll be his clan He will wipe the tears away From our eyes Death and pain have passed away With all lies Then the angel showed to me, flowing from the throne, down the street a river flowed. Night was gone, on each bank the tree of life bore its fruit to heal. All the nations gathered there, God will heal. Look, God's dwelling place is now here with man. He will be their God and we'll be his clan. He will wipe the tears away from our eyes. A death and pain have passed away with all life.